It's quite encouraging, actually. Uh, you see a lot of South Asian actors working on TV films. Uh, here and there, you know, some South Asian stories being told as well. From um, uh, the Black Prince is is, is is an example of that. But when I when I first started, um, when I, I had this dream of becoming an actor, I, I, I wanted to be part of telling some wonderful stories. I moved. I, I I was going to school in the San Francisco Bay Area. I was going to college there. After graduation, I moved to Los Angeles to become an actor. And when I, and I knew nobody in Los Angeles, not a single soul. It, it was like I was literally dropped off in, uh, in front of the Chinese theater by my, by my brother. And I, I, I looked, I'm standing in front of the Chinese theater on, Sun, on Hollywood Boulevard. And I look across and I see this, this uh, motel and this, this, this Indian fellow looking out of the window. And I wave to him and I, I'm shouting across the street to him, I said, do you have a room? <laughs> he said, come. <laughs> so I rented a room from him uh, and I stayed there for a while and I started going to acting school and so forth. And um, I took a very uh, sort of a academic approach to learning the craft and immersing myself in the process, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the craft of acting. But the difficult part at that time was, that was all fine and done, you know, but the difficult part was that, where do I go from there? Mm -hmm. There were no opportunities for Indian actors. Right. And, uh, and, but I was one of those uh, stubborn sort of um, um, individuals that even faced with all these hardships and impossibilities. I, I told myself, I'm not going back. I'm not going to go back home. I'm going to stay here. I'm going I'm to make something happen all my life. Uh, I came with a dream, and I want to see some some portion of that dream come true. And it took me, yeah, <laughs> it, uh, maybe somewhat stupid at the time. But <laughs> when I look back, I sometimes actually look back and say, you know, if I had to do that all over again, maybe I wouldn't have done that. Really? Maybe, yeah, maybe I would have gone into something else. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I was actually an engineer. I have a master's in industrial engineering. I said, maybe I should have stuck to engineering. Oh. Maybe I should have taught, because that was another thing I wanted to do. This beautiful story would not be Yeah, controlled. that's all, yeah. It's, see, life, life has its own plan. It's its, its own journey that, um, y of course, you have something to do with this, but then at the very end, maybe nothing to do with this. It's everything is, uh, I'm not saying everything's predestined and it's out of your hands, but Things keep happening that one moment leads to another. So life, I've learned that if I just live life moment to moment and live as truthfully and utmost honesty and rest will come together and some force out there is listening to your dreams and your thoughts and somehow or another, maybe a, a small percentage of it will come together and, 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 and happen in a good way. Um, How do you think the diversity scene is now, right? And, and it's actually, like I said, this is very encouraging. It's, it's quite encouraging. A, a lot of our actors, actresses are uh, out there working um, and, and uh, uh, um, able to tell stories uh, that are part of their culture. Um, so I, I think, you know, with, with what's happening now, more of that can happen. I remember I, I was on a show called Saint Elsewhere. That was my earliest break, right. uh, a TV series called Saint Elsewhere, and I played this Indian doctor. And one of the difficulties that the writers would have, and they would always come up to me, we don't know what to write for you. We, we, we just don't know where to take your, to your character. And I was here and there, I, was, I would give them hints and stuff, but I, I didn't know much about the business, and, and I, I didn't want to be too forceful, say, oh, you know, you can do this and that. But th the problem at that time was all of the writers were American writers. And they had no understanding of, even if they wanted to tell Indian stories, no understanding of Indian culture. There was um, so little known of who we were, and there was no, even not a sense of curiosity about who we were. Mm. Uh, they didn't want to take the, the, the step, the next step, to to even discover what our lives are all about, what our culture is all about. And now I think what has happened in the last sort of a generation, uh, a lot of these writers are coming out of uh, places like you know uh, um, um, Stanford and. Um, um, uh, New York Film Academy and so forth, and, 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 where, yeah, and where, where they're coming in contact with a lot of other South Asians who yes. are also part of that, that environment, right. and they're learning more and more about it. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and this, of course, you know, India has, has, uh, has an exposure worldwide now. A big market, and too. People are, yeah, big market, and people are not just curious anymore, people are very interested right. uh, in Indian culture and Indian thinking. And that and makes it a yeah, yeah, good point. And yeah. That makes it more... Uh, yeah. I, like, like I, I, I would, I've, I've said, you know, um, um, I'm, and I've been saying this for, for a number of years, that the Bollywood film industry has got to go beyond just curiosity. Uh, the rest of the world can't be just, oh, it's nice. No, it's got to go beyond that and say, yes, 
there's that form of cinema as well. Right. And uh, there's, there's, there is tolerance and there is acceptance. Uh, we don't want tolerance, we want acceptance. True. And, and, that's, and that's happening. Yeah. Uh, two short questions, bro, and you are from LA, you're in New York. Tell me uh, one thing that you prefer, you like about LA versus New York, and one thing about <laughs> New York versus LA. I, I actually, uh, this, it's been a number of years since I was here last. Oh, really? I, I think about nine years, ten years ago. Wow. I actually love New York, and I, I, but I still at the same time, I can't see myself living here. I, I lived in the Bay Area. <laughs> Uh, you really got to get used to this kind of lifestyle. Uh, what I like about this, it reminds me of England. Uh, mm. I grew up, like I said, I grew up in England, and it has that kind of a busyness to it. Um, it's kind of almost like a, even though New York's large, it's kind of small and it's togetherness. You know, you, in England, you walk down the street and you see hundreds of other people walking around you, yeah. which you don't see in LA. LA has this almost like an isolation, you know, everybody lives in their communities. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, and I also, I, I live in a suburb of Los Angeles, uh, which is, it, it, it can get quite boring because <laughs> there's, there's nothing really happens around there. Uh, New York is never boring. New York is never boring. It's just like we, we got in last night quite late and it was still alive and then it felt good. The, the only reason I say I probably wouldn't be able to live here is because I, I would almost have to really relearn this kind of a lifestyle. I'm just right. so used to what, what right. Ellie has given me over the last few years. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, let's get back to the film. Last. What, uh, what would be your uh, word? to audience, especially I would say you know, American audience, mm -hmm. because the film is releasing worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, people who do not know about India, why should they watch this film and uh, you know, what should they expect? Yeah, if, if you just leave aside the fact that it's a story of an Indian character, uh, Maharaj Dilip Singh, a central character, um, and just look at it from a human perspective, from a human point of view, it's a story of a man struggle, a man's struggle, a man's journey to find himself to find himself and reconnect with who he really is. And then once he does, he goes on this path to defy everything that had changed him. At the core of it is Maharaj Dilip Singh, at the age of five becomes the king of a very powerful kingdom. Uh, at the age of seven, he's torn away from his mother. Uh, at the age of 15, he's actually taken out of his country, his environment, and brought into a, a, a foreign culture, a foreign um, I think his, his, his faith is changed, he's indoctrinated into Christianity, he was sick. Right. Uh, he was actually baptized as a Christian. He's almost force-fed this, this lifestyle and uh, he has no mother or a father to raise him. Um, and then when he reconnects with his mother 14 years later, and the mother reawakens this, 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 this thinking in him and reminds him of who he really is, that he's a king of a very powerful kingdom. And um, he had a... In fact, he questions his mother. He says, the king was not on my making. I was five years old. I and had one thing. And the last yeah. king who owned Ko uh, the Kohinoor. Kohinoor. Yeah, he was, he was, he was I actually... I didn't know about that until if, I heard that. If in today's term, if, if the kingdom of Punjab had not been touched and, um, and, and the Maharaj Dilip Singh lineage was there, they would be the wealthiest family in the world. Uh, they had so much wealth. They, they had the salt mines that are part of in, in Pakistan now. They're worth... I think it was like $50 billion or something. Uh, this was their personal wealth. This had nothing to do with the kingdom itself. Uh, so going back to the story, as, as if they just look at it from that point of view, that it's a story of this, this young boy taken away and, 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 and forced into a, living a life that's not his. But when he finds out the truth, he wants to reconnect with that. He actually re-embraces his faith again. He, he, he um, goes back to Sikhism and goes on this journey to defy the British, stand up single-handedly against in, 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 in English, to not only just reclaim his kingdom, but the independence all of India. He was the very first voice raised against the British for India's independence. Um, and if you just look at it from that point, it's, it's one man's struggle to stand against a powerful, powerful force and and um, um, fight for the truth. And that's uh, that and as any, that anybody, anyone, right any, uh, anyone can rela relate to that. And uh, from a very political sort of an agenda or point of view. Right now we live in a very very divided sort of a world. Right. So much is happening. Right. Uh, I'm experiencing things that I've never thought I would experience in America. Um, during the British Raj, uh, it, there was similar sort of ideology or ide ideology across the world. They widen rule. That's what the, how British were able to control most of the world. Uh, and we're seeing that now. Right. So it's, it's a very contemporary sort of a film, in a, even though it's a period of film. Uh, at the core of it is a very contemporary story that ev everybody can relate to.
Absolutely, and I, I can 100% uh, agree with that, and everybody should definitely watch this film. Sure, and please. Thank you so much uh, Thank you. for talking to us. Congratulations again.